Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part 20 of the front dash build. In this video we're going to look at the recently built engine monitoring instruments. We're going to install those into the front dash frame and we'll bring them online and run a, a number of operation tests. Let's buckle up. So to recap the previous video in this series, part 19, we started by looking at the original prototype that we see on screen now. We talked about building a new EMI panel, but how it would be based on this original prototype with a number of improvements. The first set of improvements were all geared around improving the aesthetic of the fascia, and we arrived at what we can see on screen now. This gave us some lettering, which hadn't made it into the prototype, and most importantly, the coloured bezels. Other improvements related to accessibility, such as how the stepper motors were mounted, removable needle pointers, and to overall make a contain unit which incorporated the master as well as the slaves of the whole RS485 network into it. And what that did was it moved us from the image we see on screen now, which is the original overall prototype and the network it runs on, to what we can see now, which is just that one single unit, which in itself doesn't exceed the footprint of what was just the original slave EMI panel itself. So with the completed EMI panel that we can see before us now, in this video we're going to install that into the front dash, and then we can run our operation tests. So let's go ahead and put that EMI in place. With this now installed, I did mention previously that I also wanted a monitoring instrument in place, something that will monitor the power consumption of this network. What we have on screen now is something I've built to do that, which I've called the external monitoring instrument for the engine monitoring instrument, EMI, EMI. And we'll just have a look at that now. Similar to the monitoring instrument I had for my other RS485 network, this has a kill switch also. In the unlikely cases, any readings I don't like, flick the switch and all the power's cut. This monitor gives a greater number of readings than the one I used previously, as well as the voltage and current, it lets me understand the overall watt consumption, the overall power usage. And those orange RJ45 connectors you can see, they marry up with the same coloured ones that are at the back of the new engine monitoring instruments. Ultimately this is something that will be purposely put as a less prominent feature of the front dash, something I can just monitor and look at as needed but it'll be out of the way so for that reason the fascia of it's not been given the usual cnc cut finish it's just a, a piece of laminate sat onto some acrylic so i'm going to go ahead and install this you can see the wiring come through already for that and that would just be just below the other monitoring instruments that we have We'll just have a quick glance at that, just as all the various cables and connectors are put in place. So let's have a look at what we've got so far. So we can see the EMI panel and the monitor for that. Just come in close now and have a look at the EMI panel installed up close. So this is interesting now because we can now look and see what the overall power consumption is for the unit as a whole. We can see it's drawing just shy of 1.7 amps and it's running just under 12 volts. And that's in terms of it powering all 12 stepper motors, the easy driver boards, the Arduino Nanos, the Arduino Mega and the network as a whole. And it's kind of cool because it displays the overall amount of watts, but also has a data queue where it scrolls through other information. Within this monitoring unit, I've also put in place three 
toggle switches and each of them has a middle position then it's momentary each way and I can use that now to reset any of the slaves so as I press that one there um, I chose the middle toggle and push to the left and you can see that that resets slave number three which controls those gauges five and six and then I'll toggle another that's a top right one and you can see that's for slave two and you can see that those Arduino nanos at the slave are now being reset they're going through their initialization sequence so it is handy to have that option if for any reason um, I need to reset any of the slaves any of the gauges then I can just do it by uh, flicking those toggles on the monitor now uh, before we start running the operations tests on this probably a good time to have a look uh, under the hood now at them in place and the overall uh, wiring of the front dash to this point So there is a fair bit to this and it would be really interesting to see what this ends up like once all the other instruments are eventually installed. So what we'll do now, we'll have a look at an operation test, we'll do it in night time conditions and uh, that will let us look at the bat lighting as well. So we'll take a close up look, I will alter the brightness because the bleed through is not as exaggerated as it looks there, so there we go and you can have a bit of a clearer idea there of what the transmission of light is actually like, it's really quite clear. And although that's how it appears to actually look at, what that doesn't reflect well is just how clear the pointer needles are, so if I alter the brightness back it now gives a better idea of what it's like to look at the pointer so I don't think there's one camera shot I can take that really shows exactly how it looks it's clear in terms of reading the gauge itself um, but also to be able to see where the pointers are at I'll just put a picture in picture showing a close up of the EMI panel just so we can have a look at the gauges and the movement of them So the initial test there, as I've just brought this panel online, look good. But what we'll do now as part of a key operation test is have a look at the engines being spooled up during a ramp start in daytime conditions. I'll bring up a view of the throttle quadrant, which is part of the hose test system. And let's start off. You can probably make out there in the reflection of the gauge windows me moving the mouse as I interact with the electrical panel and it does make me think that I can't wait until the right console's built, until the whole thing's built and then I almost can throw away my mouse and control the whole thing with proper panels. Well, that's a canopy down, let's fire up the APU. And I have to say DCS sound effects 10 out of 10, it's awesome.
There's a successful engine start, we can power down the APU. So on a separate test now, if we just advance the throttle and have a look at the movement of the gauges. And whilst I will be undertaking a whole heap of other smaller operation tests, there's a few of the key ones. So that's a, another panel built and installed into the front dash. I think a really good addition and it looks like it's really coming along now. Well that's the end of the video. I think I'm going to spend some time now to get a bit of night flying in. And whilst I'm doing that, think through some of the next panels I'm going to be working on. I know I said the sound effects are good in DCS, but I have to say I'd give the graphics 10 out of 10 too. I think I'll do a bit of flying, taking the sights. Thanks for watching.